So when we have a look at the reference photo, you can see that the rooftop is quite grey, it's got a grey tone to it, and the white building, because it's in the shadow, this has also got quite a grey tone. So if we just use the blue as it is, it's going to be too bright, it's going to be too, too blue. So to make a nice grey, we can just mix these two together. And then add some of that titanium white to it. And you start to get this lovely grey. So when we have a look there onto, I'll show you the picture, you know, the tone of that, that's looking, you know, really, really nice for the roof. And what's nice about this is once we've got that mix, and you're getting used to using a palette knife, you can then keep that mix, bring a bit of it down and add a bit more white to it. And then you've created another gray that is gonna be harmonious with the first gray that we mixed. And then when you have a look at it on the picture, you can start to see Okay, it might be nice for this little building in here. Maybe I could go a bit lighter for this end house here. So add a bit more white to it. And then you haven't really done much mixing. You've only used a couple of colors so far, but you're starting to use the tones that you've got to create that nice variety in your painting. So you just have a check to the picture. That's looking pretty good tonally. So take a bit of that lighter one and just uh, put some of it on. Go slightly darker there. So mix the two together. I mean, there is a bit of a challenge with a palette knife. If you're, if you're pretty careful, you can get in there and get the shapes. It's like a darker window in there. So, you know, just grab a bit of that burnt umber, put that in. And again, get used to using kitchen rolls so that, you know, if you want a clean palette, just kind of wipe it off. And then you've got a clean mix. You can work very quickly with palette knives because of this, because they're so easy to wipe off and clean. They can be really great to get in a nice coverage of a clean, crisp colour. So just take that darker mix. It's nice. So I'm just going to swap to the brush, take a bit of this uh, grey tone, water it down a bit and just put it into this closest mountain. It's probably not going to stay this colour but I'm just getting an idea of the tones that are happening. That's nice. And this other little house here, I think I can go a bit bluer on him. And often when I've got you know a nice colour on my brush, I just scan the rest of the painting to see are there any little flecks I can put elsewhere just to bring that colour around the rest of the picture. It doesn't have to be much, just a slight indication. Okay, 
Okay, great. I'll use a bit of this, lighten it up a bit. Put it out in the distance for that further mountain. And again, if you want that to be a cleaner colour, just mix some with on the palette knife. It's a great way of checking your mixes. You know, you see if you've got a really nice clean mix. It kind of changes the feeling even if you've got the same colour mix and you paint it on thinly, as soon as you put it on more opaquely, it just changes the quality of that paint. I think we need a couple more colours now to start to add some more dimensions to this painting. So I'm just going to add a red and a brighter yellow. So the red I've got is a crimson, a permanent alizarin crimson, and the yellow I've got is a cadmium yellow. The cadmium yellow has just got a bit more opacity than a lot of other yellows. So I'm just going to take the blue that I had, mix this kind of lighter tone again that we had. If you look at the reference photo, you start to see there's this real soft hue of like a purpley hue there. There's even some reflected onto the actual roof. It's got this nice purpley hue to it. So I'm just going to add a bit of the red to that. I think that will work really nicely. So again, I'm just mixing the similar hue that I've got there and then just adding a touch of the red and just scraping a tiny bit just with the end of the palette knife. Let's have a look. That's nice. I need to be more generous myself. So it's amazing how much paint you can use with acrylics with this technique. Don't be scared of like wasting your paint because it can make such a big difference to how the finished painting looks. If you always have it too thin, um, you lose a lot of the different textures that can really make a painting really work well. It's always nice to have that contrast between areas that are very like thinly applied and other areas that have got that more impasto feel to them. So I'm being quite light here, how I'm just kind of scraping the paint over. And it gives such a nice solid colour Bit of that purple colour, I'm just going to bring onto this roof. Tweak any of those bits just with your brush, just again add a touch of water to it. 
just help you to bring any of those, really more for the drawing if you want to change any of your drawing. So for the sky, it would be quite nice to have something that balances well with that purpley hue. So I'm going to, instead of going blue and having it too blue and too purple, I'm going to make a very, very soft yellow. If you've got a bit of Naples yellow, that would work really nicely for this. Or even yellow ochre with a bit of white, but I'll just mix the yellow with the colours that I've got out here. So we don't want it to be too yellow, too lemon, but we still want it to be quite light. So when we have a look at that, it's, it, it kind of clashes a bit too much. We've just got to warm it up slightly. So to warm it up, if we add a little bit of the red, in a little bit. It's looking nice. So it's got like that Naples yellow kind of like a creamy texture to it rather than being too harsh with the yellow. Make sure the mountain doesn't go right up to the corner. You don't want to create what's called a tangent where the line hits the corner. So just have that little space on your painting. It will make a real, really big difference. It's always something to look out for in your paintings, especially when you're doing mountains that you haven't got, you know, the edge of the mountain hidden into the corner. warmer on this side. You can just add the white straight to it. Just to lighten off that area there, give it a real focus through. this yellow just make it a touch a touch brighter yellow than the sky just gonna add a little bit at the front of this building and again what you've got now is you know a tone in the sky and then a tone in the front of your building so that it helps to balance it like how we've got this purple here and there's a bit on the mountains and a bit on the rooftop. So it's not just one area of the painting. So now I feel we can start to add some warmer colours in here and then start to judge the earlier colours we've put onto it and then see how the painting's progressing. 